Yesterday I uploaded a video about a very basic shortwave receiver. This is the schematic by the way. And I want to make a series of videos about this uh, radio receiver. It's a superheterodyne radio and um, I want to pay attention to all the um, issues regarding this very, very simple concept. I removed the video from yesterday. I found it was a little bit uh, too long, but I want to do it over all again. And by the way, many thanks for all the reactions that I got. For instance, regarding the power supply with the 7812, and also about a uh, question about the ganging of the, uh, the VFO. Um, tuning capacitor and the antenna tuning capacitor. In this radio they are not coupled. In normal radios for consumers etc. Uh, these two capacitors are coupled and the, both the, the, the coil here and the antenna coil are uh, aligned in such a way that there is always a fixed difference in frequency where they are tuned in and that difference is often 455 kilohertz. But in this radio, shortwave radio, we have two separate uh, coils, separate tank circuits that we can tune in uh, both and that has um, uh, a lot of good uh, things. It means, for instance, that you can tune the antenna coil much better and much more precise on uh, weak radio stations. The problem at the moment is that the radio is tuned to approximately uh, 7 MHz. It's now in the afternoon in the Netherlands and there are no radio stations to be heard. But perhaps in the evening I want to uh, do another video. Perhaps I can make some uh, radio stations on shortwave audible. At first the schematic, perhaps that's good to show. This is the schematic. I have to pan a little bit. You see the first transistor now in the middle of the screen is the BF337. You see the tank circuit now in the middle of the screen. So this is the first HF high frequency stage and that's here. That's this uh, transistor that's now in the middle of the screen. I've connected the antenna here from one meter. That works good normally. And we can set the amplification by uh, the potentiometer from 1K. First stage. Second stage is the EF amplifier and the mixer. Now in the middle of the screen is the BC547B that acts as the first IF stage and also as the mixer. And you can see here that there is a wire, this wire, going to the VFO, the variable frequency oscillator, and you can see that the signal from the VFO is mixed on the emitter from the uh, first transistor. I say it was a BC547B, that's not true. I see now that it is a PMP transistor, the BC557B. And then we have the second stage also with the EF uh, filter in the collector lead and that's um, the good thing from using um, BC557B. I've used that by purpose because I wanted to uh, connect both IF transformers to ground. That makes the whole circuit more stable. So they are now in the collector lead. When I had used a, an NPN transistor, the, uh, the IF transformers were in the collector lead and could not be connected to ground. 
And finally, now the detector diode OA81 and the uh, audio amplifier. By the way, you can find this schematic in this book that I've published on the Lulu website. Here you find a complete description from this radio. Uh, all the components, etc, etc. And also more theory about uh, reception uh, in superheterodyne radios. Uh, I have uh, written down some points to talk about in this video. At first, in general, then the schematic. I have um, talked already a little bit about the schematic. How superhead reception works, the power supply, antenna coil, high frequency stage, EF amp, amplitude modulation detection, alignment. And this is the first question that I want to uh, handle. Why is all built on wood? Well, that's my favorite way of making radio circuits. This wood is varnished with glue for PVC, for sewage pipes. It's clear glue. And the reason is that the wood must be completely free of moisture. Also this white board where the radio was built on and the VFO here are all covered with that glue. Also here the coil in the middle from the VFO is also covered with that glue. And the reason is that the whole radio, all circuits must stay completely dry. When there's moisture uh, the wood will uh, act as a kind of resistor. And also here, for instance the toilet roll is made of cardboard. It will also, when it gets moist, this will have a very big effect on the Q, the quality factor from the coil. So everything must stay very dry. That's the reason why the toilet roll was first soaked. You see that coil soaked into that glue. It dries very quickly. Within 5 or 10 minutes you can work on, on your radio coil. And then the windings. The windings are made from the antenna coil and also from the VFO coil are made with plastic isolated wire. This is also to do with the moisture question. By this way uh, the, the wire inside keeps completely free from moisture, completely dry. And that means that the isolation is perfect. And there's also another good thing. The windings from the coil have a natural spacing because there's plastic around the metal. And to get a high Q, high quality factor, you need spacing between the windings. So this is no problem. When you have a blank wire and you must make it, um, uh, must wind it on a big roll and also keep, give it spacing, that's uh, a big problem. There are some tricks to do that, but this is the better way, natural spacing by means of the plastic isolation. Um, you can also see here the underside from the radio. Normally when I finish uh, such a project I glue to the, uh, the underside of the wooden board uh, tin metal. So very uh, thin metal made for instance from cola cans etc. You can glue that on the, the underside of the board and uh, with some pins fix it further, solder it all through and connect that uh, iron board to the minus wire, that's this wire, the minus, from the, uh, from the radio. It's very important, it, it, it gives a kind of shielding and that's necessary uh, to make the whole circuit work properly. 
you have a, a ground plane and an iron earth plane and that's necessary but this was only uh, a first experiment so I did not uh, do that in this case so that was all to tell about the first issue how the radio was made uh, something about the necessity of keeping all the coils very dry and um, see you next time in the following video